So I got a ton of Pokemon cards. They're vintage and they're in beautiful condition. Like to show grades. Holy mercy. We got some tens. I didn't think that they would be in 10 condition. This is the one right here. All right, so a lot of people have been wondering how we're doing with sports cards and Pokemon cards. Well, just got a text update from Nash Cards, who I send my cards in to get graded. Definitely recommend Nash Cards. They don't sponsor me in any way. They just provide an amazing service with text alerts, and they're the cheapest third-party submitter out there for cards. Figured we could get my live reaction to the grades. So we don't have the cards on hand, but the grades have officially popped. And we can click here and view grades. So it's eight cards. I sent them as express months ago. I don't know exactly how long it's been, but I think it's eight Pokemon cards. So we'll see um, exactly what is in this order. Click to show grades. Holy mercy. We got some tens. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? So these. <laughs> I'm seeing already the top three are tens. So these were Pokemon cards from a trade that I did. Uh, some of you may remember it's the biggest trade I ever did. It included an Xbox Series X and like two or three switches. So I got a ton of Pokemon cards, but the catch was they're vintage and they're in beautiful condition. I didn't think that they would be in 10 condition. But holy crap, it looks like, so the Expedition Blastoise Hollow got a PSA 10, which is insane. Uh, so I, I paid about $55, maybe 60 after shipping per card to grade. Um, and then Expedition Dragonite Hollow PSA 10. That is absolutely nuts. Okay. Oh man, one of the Charizards. Let's go. Okay, we gotta pull this up. So there were two of the two Charizards in this order, um, and they're the Reverse Hollow from Expedition. Expedition is one of my favorite sets of all time. I collected it as a kid, <laughs> but getting <laughs> getting the card from uh, Raw to PSA 10 is some next level stuff. Let's see if we can find what that puts the value at. This will probably be a card for the collection, but still cool to see what that means. It's going to be hard to find it because I don't have the exact card number. It said 2002? Yeah, 2002. It's not... I mean, 2003. What was that one up there? That first. was Sky Ridge. That's, oh, okay. that's like the last Wizards of the Coast set. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that's it. That's the card. $2,375? <laughs> what? That is insane. So that one card doubles the entire trade already. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mean, apparently it's incredibly rare to get that card graded high because raw, that's like a, I don't know, maybe a 50 to to $100 card maybe 200 in like a decent condition so that is insane <laughs> insane insane all right let's see about blastoise see if there's any psa 10s of that all right so psa 10 i think this is the blastoise uh one of those went for 355 uh 567 for japanese so it feels like that 355 is a little bit soft i think that was it, on bids yeah it was on bids and the 567 Japanese was, so I think that person got a good deal. Oh, that's a reverse. Mine is a regular hollow, I think. Okay, so this is regular hollow, which is what mine is. PSA 10 Japanese for 800. I think English is gonna be even a little bit more. That's awesome. So I would say, I would put that Blastoise around 800 as well. All right, let's, <laughs> let's keep on getting into these grades. I assume they order them highest to lowest but we'll see okay near mint eight for the uh the second reverse charizard which is honestly still really good so when, when i sent these off i was hoping okay maybe we'll get mostly eights and some nines that was kind of my mindset so obviously with three tens i'm thrilled but let's see mint nine uh the hypno hollow 
that's pretty huge. That's Aquapolis 2003. Uh, let's keep going. Mint 9 for the Gengar Reverse Hollow from the Legendary Collection. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. I love that card. Legendary Reverse. Let's see if we can find a PSA 9 in that one. I can't wait to get these things back. PSA 8 went for 290. Uh, 9 went. For Nope, that's not what it is. Four went for one nineteen. If it would have got a ten, it would have been twelve thousand dollars. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh! So a nine is in between like, yeah. two hundred and twelve thousand. What a range! There's definitely going to be quite a big jump from a a nine to a ten in value, but huh. it's not showing. Uh, yeah, so I mean, there's not really any solds on a nine. What would you price it up at, off the top of your head? I would say it's got to be in the 800 range, based on based on what we're seeing. Because mm -hmm. PSA 8 to 90, and a, even an 8 to a 9 is a pretty big difference to go from near mint to mint. That's insane. So that's going to be another beautiful card. All right, let's go down to the next. Another mint 9 for the Fur Alligator Expedition set. <laughs> this is insane. And I have... So many more cards that I didn't send out, unfortunately. Um, we'll, we'll grab those in a second. But I like I basically sent like, okay, these are like eight of the best ones. I think these ones might grade well. That was my mindset here. And <laughs> so this kind of solidifies the fact that I need to send off basically everything that's decent. And then another mint nine on a Gengar Hollow from the Expedition set. <laughs> this is like insane, insane grades. Uh, apparently I have learned a little bit because each time I've sent off cards it's kind of like gotten progressively a little bit better. And this one is just through the roof. So let's go ahead and grab some of those other cards so we can see what else I need to send off. Um, obviously PSA is not open yet when we're recording this, but they will be soon. So we're going to get those ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we figured we should look up the third 10 as well. It was the Dragonite, and I forgot. This is one of my favorite art style cards of all time. Uh, this card in particular. So, the only 10 listed is from a different country, and they're asking $9,000. That is completely not going to happen. Apparently, it's only a pop 27. So, there's 27 of these cards in the world. Maybe I'm increasing that pop to 28 after, after this submission. But somebody accepted a best offer, which they were uh, asking 3500 So that is <laughs> also nuts. Um, there is a, um, okay, a 130 point. You can see what the best offer was accepted at. So 130point.com, for those that don't know. Let's see, I spelled that wrong. Expedition. Dragonite. So let's see what that best offer actually was. Give that a second to load. Japanese PSA 10 went for 720. And there's a good one. PSA 10 from the Netherlands went for $2,500. So this is the regular Hollow Expedition. One of my favorite cards of all time. $2,500 card. And the, the other one may have come in somewhere around that mark but I still have very slow internet so we won't know for a little bit but we can see what that went for <laughs> whenever that comes up <laughs> okay so finally got the Dragonite information to load on 130point.com and the 3500 was accepted at $3,250 so that card went raw from 100 to 200 Got a 10 and is now 3,250. That's insane. Obviously, this is a unique circumstance to, to take vintage Pokemon cards from a collection, not even like pack fresh or anything. They've been sitting, thankfully sleeved, for years. And there you go. $3,000 card. Okay, so found the cards that I was going to submit. I actually sent these to Nash cards like a couple days before the PSA shut down. They weren't able to get them sent off in time. So they sent them back to me, but whenever PSA opens back up, I will be sending them. So again, same collection, a lot of high-end stuff. Look at that, Delibird, 
first edition hollow. I think that's uh, Neo Genesis, one of the early sets. Got the Entei promo. This is a Igly Buff promo. This is a pretty big card, and I love this card. Nine Tails. I believe that is also Expedition, and it definitely seems like these Expedition cards are huge value if they grade high. I remember somebody putting in the comments for this card when I got it that tens are in the thousands of dollars, and I'm now seeing that that's probably true. That's a Skarmory Expedition. You know, I I don't know if I I probably will get more tens out of here now that I'm seeing I got three out of eight. Like that's. Thir what is that? Thirty-seven and a half percent. So that's a pretty darn good hit rate. And then four out of the eight were nines, and one was an eight. So obviously, every single one of these is worth sending off if it gets an eight or better. Even some of these, if they get sevens. But Tyranitar. That's a reverse hollow, also expedition. And the expedition set pretty notably has the lines on the side, the E on the bottom. Some of their sets have that as well. Sky Ridge has it, and those are my favorite Pokemon cards, so very nostalgic for me. There's the Raichu Reverse. So, I mean, a lot of these could get 8s, 9s, 10s, which is just blowing my mind. There's Golem Reverse, and then we'll kind of shuffle through a little bit faster. See a lot of Reverse Hollows. And the crazy thing is, I believe it was Michael that I got these from, and and what he did when he got these when he was younger is put them straight into sleeves. I was skeptical of that at first, but when I saw the condition and the lack of scratches on all the cards, there's a big one. Venusaur. I, another Gengar. Yeah, Gengar Reverse Hollow. So regular Hollows are always better than Reverse Hollows, but these are still big cards if they're Reverses. Being Vintage Expedition, Chansey EX. So very clearly, Michael really did put these straight into sleeves. And guys, I've got a lot more to go. He sent me a further part of his collection, which was commons, but all first editions from this era. So I'm going to have to look through a lot of those. Wow, that's a beautiful card. Cloyster, Kingler. And uh, we'll be sending off a lot more. Obviously, it'll take a while to get them back, but oh, there's the non-hollow version of the Dragonite that we got a 10 in. Even the non-hollow version out of 10 was three to $500, so, I mean, and those are a little bit easier to grade because the scratches aren't going to be, you know, as noticeable as if they were on a hollow. And then some of the commons, but Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, stuff like that, I thought would still be worth sending off because these looked really good. There's the non-hollow Blastoise. I believe that's what we're getting a 10 in. Which is a beautiful card. And a few more non-hollows and some hollows at the end. So this is actually a card that I pulled, not related to the collection. I also pulled that Charizard. Some of you guys may remember. <laughs> Hit the like button if you do. And then a beautiful Mewtwo EX, Electabuzz, a couple of those. So really nice stack to send off here. Man, it's been a long time. I've been excited and uh, waiting for these cards to get their <laughs> grades in, and it was well worth the wait. So hopefully it doesn't cost a ton to get them graded when PSA oh, opens back yeah, up. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what services they open, how much it'll cost. <laughs> I'm hoping they still have like an Express at around $60 a card, because nope. that's probably what I would want to do on a lot. I was about to say, what, what's the max you would pay for the average card here? A lot of them I would I would happily pay 60 but on stuff like this, I, it just not really worth it. Because if those don't get a 10 and you're paying 60 not worth it. But if you pay 20 I would happily pay 30 for a common card that I think would get a 9 or a 10. Um, the value increase is definitely there. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to go through the rest of that collection here in the next few weeks and get them ready, because I want to be ready when PSA opens back up. Okay, guys, so we've got some mutual flip cards back. The grades have popped on Nash cards. Four card submission. Sent them out Express months, months ago. And we're just going to get a live reaction to the grades. So I believe this order includes 
some Kobe's. Um, let's just see for sure. Okay, yep, so Kobe Bryant top rookie card. Uh, Thane and I paid maybe 250 for that a long time ago. A upper deck uh, rookie exclusives, Kobe. And then the Michael Jordan baseball SP1 rookie card, upper deck. And also a base set hollow Charizard, which I got at a card store. So that's the only personal card. The other three are all mutual flip. So we're going to go ahead and view the grades. Let me Oop. guess Let me guess them before. So Michael Jordan baseball. Pretty sure I was hoping for an 8 or 9 on that one. Uh, the Kobe Bryant rookie exclusives. Thane saw the dude in the card shop open it from a pack in front of him and get mildly excited and then Thane bought the card for like $40. So that one would have a chance of getting a 10 since it is pack fresh. The only thing is the guy just kind of threw it on the display case before putting it into a sleeve. So maybe some damage happened. It's crazy that just those little things could damage the card. The Kobe Bryant tops looks really, really clean. It was pretty well centered. Hoping for a nine. Um, and then, you know, nine, ten on the upper deck. And the Charizard base set, maybe a seven. Um, I just figured it was worth grading. It was clean, but not perfect. And here we go. View grades. So we're going to go slowly, one at a time. We want to see gold. We want to see some yellow. Oh, okay. So Charizard actually got a PSA 8, which I'm happy about. I guessed a 7, and I'm thrilled with an 8. So that's going to be the highest graded base set Charizard that I have, which is awesome. Okay, next card. Kobe got a 9. So that that's pretty big. 1996 tops Kobe rookie. It's definitely down right now compared to where it was when we sent it off. I mean, it was huge when we sent it off. But it looks around 700, so 7 to 900, depending on if it will sell. But that's amazing. Only spent about $250 for the card, graded it for 60. That's a big win. Gotta love that. Obviously, a 10 would have been a major home run. Okay, I think the upper deck one will be next. So this is the one I think could possibly get a 10. Nine. Still good. So him throwing it out of the case, probably, honestly, <laughs> probably digged up a corner or something. Uh, but a nine is still a major win for a 1996 card. I'm really happy with that. This is gonna be great for mutual flip. We've been waiting to get some funds back. Okay, and then the Michael Jordan is gonna be last, the upper deck. Baseball rookie. Again, a nine. Happy. I'm, I'm happy with that with those results because we very easily could have seen some sevens in here, in which case it would have not been worth it to send any of them. But every single one of these, well worth it to send the grades. I mean, no like major, major home runs with tens, but some solid wins with three nines and an eight. It's a beautiful thing. Four to six weeks later. Well, the cards have officially arrived. Very excited to look at these beauties. So we already saw the grades, but now we gotta see the cards up close. So we'll just go one by one. So right there, Gengar Hollow Expedition. Again, one of my favorite sets of all time. You can see the E-Series, what I was talking about, the lines on the sides, and then the E on the bottom left. If you see Pokemon cards like that out in the wild, they're probably good. You're probably not gonna find them in this condition in the wild, but if you do, you're gonna do all right. Um, and then it says 2002 down here, so really anything pre-2004 is way more likely to be good. But PSA 9 for that Gengar is a beautiful thing to see. And then for Alligator, love that card too, PSA 9. So that's also from Expedition. I think I might have like most of the Expedition Hollows and Reverse Hollows that I bought from this collection, so I will be grading everything else down the line as well. There's the Gengar. Probably my favorite 
I don't know what my favorite card is from this bunch. They're all awesome. But I love the Legendary Collection. Um, the Charizard out of that would probably be my Holy Grail Pokemon card to get in a 10. But those are really hard to grade because most of the card is hollow and that gets scratched up really easily if it doesn't get sleeved immediately. So getting a 9 on that is insane. Hypno. That's from Aquapolis. And that is a hollow and that graded a 9. So that's a beautiful card as well. All right, looks like here's the first Expedition Charizard Reverse. So the lowest grade with an eight, and honestly I was expecting eight to be the high number and seven to be the low number from this group. I just, I haven't gotten back uh, graded Pokemon cards yet. This one honestly looks pretty, pretty darn near perfect. So it must have like a surface scratch or something on the front. Um, but either way, I was gonna send that one off. And then here we go. This is the one right here. A 10 of that same card. That is insane. The pop counts on that are so low. <laughs> I mean, there's like no flaws on this thing. So, I mean, I was being really, really critical when I was reviewing that with my magnifying lamp. Um, and I'll put a link to that magnifying lamp in the description if you want to look at your cards close. But it definitely helps to be able to like see scratches and stuff. So I could tell that these weren't really scratched up at all. Here's another beauty. The Blastoise Expedition PSA 10. Just the art, the look of the card. Beautiful and to have it in a 10 is unreal. And then the Dragonite. Absolute beauty. We saw sold on that for I think it was 3,500 in a 10. <laughs> and raw, you know, like... I might have been able to get two or three hundred as near mint, but obviously a 10 makes a big difference, so that was a good thing to grade. And then the next cards are from the other submission that I sent, but they came back at the same time. So there you go, a base set Charizard Hollow. I got an eight on it, and I'm really happy with that. I was expecting a six or seven. But that came back really, really strong. There's a little bit of a ding on the bottom left. I honestly think that is what docked it. And I knew that going in. Um, but an 8 on a base set Charizard, that is a collection piece for sure. A beautiful card. Uh, paid $350 for it at a card shop. Sent it off to get graded for another $60. And got an 8, so it ended up being worthwhile. Got this at a card show. This is a mutual flip card. Or Mutual Fund. Yeah, Mutual Flip. I said it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and got an eye, and that's a great grade. It's the Michael Jordan Upper Deck Baseball Rookie card. I think we paid 20 bucks for it at the show. In a nine, it's probably worth 100 something. So that was worthwhile to get graded. This is the Kobe that Thane saw the guy open at the card store. He pulled it right in front of him and then sold it to Thane for 40 bucks. Graded a nine. That's the Upper Deck Rookie Exclusives. I think that's a super cool card. I think it's undervalued right now, but it's still gotta be a couple hundred bucks at least. So a great addition to Mutual Flip. And then the Topps Kobe. We bought this at that same card store for $300 out the door. When we sent this off to get graded, a nine would have been like, I feel like it was 12 or 1500. It's gone down a good bit since then, but still a nine is a really, really solid card. Great card to have a Kobe Topps rookie mint condition. So that was the submission. Definitely some high-end stuff that came back, and I'm thrilled with those grades. Um, but yeah, uh, four, three cards for Mutual Flip, and then the rest are some beauty, beautiful Pokemon cards. Some of those are going to be staying in the collection. I was about to say which ones in particular. So my favorite three was the base set Charizard, the Dragonite, and then this Charizard. So those are the most likely to stay. But, you know, the way I roll with collection pieces is anything is for sale at the right price. So if, if the price skyrockets or I get a really, really strong offer, I might sell it and then just rebuy it down the line for cheaper if, if it comes up because I find stuff so frequently. That's kind of kind of how I roll with my collection. I've, I've gone through Three or four copies of the same game in my collection that I just rebuy, sell when they get really high, stuff like that. But those are absolutely beautiful, beautiful cards.
Which one of the ones that you're not selling do you think will be worth the most? Definitely this one. I, I just think, I think the only sale on that was with bids like a month ago for like 3,200. I think that was way under uh, what it could go for in a buy it now. So just quick little tip. If you have something really desirable or something along the, those lines, don't put it at auction on eBay unless you have a crazy amount of followers somewhere that you can advertise it to of people that might be interested. The right person probably won't see the card in that seven days. The person that would be willing to pay 5,000 for this kind of card probably didn't see that auction and would have loved to get it for the 3,200 it went for. Um, so that would be a buy it now for sure. But yeah, that, that card is so rare. And we saw the regular hollow version of this from the expedition set went for like, what, 20 something thousand? Yeah. Just it was it was insane. Which, I think it was like twenty three thousand or something. We might have yeah. showed it a little bit ago, but yeah. So I mean, that's crazy. Uh, apparently, the cards from the expedition set are just very very rare to get graded high. So I'm thrilled about that, and I will be sending off the next stack. Um, but you guys will probably see those in like a year. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few more submissions coming back, so we'll keep showing them when they come back. All right, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I still have the cards. They are absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely thrilled with this submission. Got them all sleeved up. Um, and right now they're collection pieces. Um, but you guys know, anything is on the table for the right trade. I don't really want to sell any. The only right trade that would get me to be interested in doing something with these would be sealed games. So sealed retro games are one thing that really excites me right now. So if you have anything high end and you're interested in these cards, obviously they do have some pretty significant value to them, um, especially the tens. Uh, reach out, let me know uh, on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to try and work out a deal. Otherwise, that is going to be it for this one. Let me know what your favorite card was. It's hard to get these without reflecting. Um, but you know, you got the Dragonite, the Charizard, the Blastoise. I would say one of the other notables is the Gengar Legendary Collection. The base set Charizard, you got the Kobe's, Michael Jordan. So let me know what your favorite card was. Until next time, art will do.